So this is going to be a demonstration of stretching Roscoe shrink mirror. Uh, it might not go quite as smoothly as um, too slickly because it's 15 years since I last stretched one of these um, and I don't have a kind of scenic workshop anymore so um, we just operate in um, with the kind of um, facilities that you could lock up in your garage basically. Um, so the most important thing, as always with any of these jobs, is to make sure the preparation is good. The frame needs to be really stout. It could be made of steel or aluminium, but um, if you're using wood, I would suggest that two by one would just be too flimsy. So a minimum frame of three by one. Um, ideally mortise and tenon, shoed and corner braced and all of that, but um, there's no reason why you shouldn't get away with that glued ply plate. Uh, the frame should really have extra bracing to uh, a normal frame so there's kind of one extra rail in this frame uh, than you'd probably have if you're just making a canvas flat. It really is crucial that that side style doesn't start to kind of bow in when the mirror starts to shrink. Now you'll notice around the edge of the frame we've um, got a, a piece of quadrant glued on now, if I had a kind of workshop with a rip saw, I'd probably just rip a piece of timber at 45 degrees and, um, and nail and glue that on. It really is important that this is glued on. If it's just pinned on, when the mirror starts to shrink, you'll find it will bow that quadrant in. Um, once you've got the quadrant on, it's a good idea just to run a block plane around or a smoothing plane and then just get a piece of fine sandpaper and just sand off the top areas then just run your fingers all the way around and just make sure there's no splinters or, or grooves or, or such like. Now, further to that, a little tip that we found that I can remember a long time ago when making these frames was we also used to run a strip of gaffer tape across the top of this quadrant. And that did a couple of things. It, it provided a really nice smooth and rounded off surface for the mirror to stretch on. And it also safeguarded against the possibility of a splinter pulling off from the top of the quadrant under the force of the mirror being shrunk back. So we're just getting a, a long strip of gaffer tape here, just pushing it down onto that top edge of the quadrant to make sure it's absolutely smooth. You can just press it hard in the corner, you get a little impression of where the mitre is, so you can just get your scissors and trim off get a, a reasonable kind of mitre join in the corner. So this is stuck down and then folded over the side and it just, you know, provides that perfect edge because bearing in mind the mirror is going to be stapled into the side of this frame and when it shrinks it's going to be pulling over that edge. So um, if it's sharp or um, got any discrepancies in it, it's going to spoil your final effect. So we've now got the, um, the mirror off the roll. The first few inches of the roll has some tape stuck on, so I've just kind of safe, you know, left a little bit extra on there. Now, before you go ahead and do a whole load of mirrors, I would highly recommend you either do a sample flat or you just do one mirror right through to the final process because you'll learn a lot in the first mirror. The first mirror will probably take you twice as long as the rest of them. So I would say, don't stretch all of your mirrors onto the frame and then heat them and find that you've got a problem. Do one, satisfy yourself fully that you've got the technique correct. Um, don't staple straight into the mirror. The staples, um, when the mirror shrinks, you'll find it will pull against the legs of the staple and it will just kind of make tiny little slots in the mirror. So before you put any staples in, uh, put a little tab of finest gaffer tape um, and then um, staple through the gaffer tape and through the mirror. That will give you a much stronger fixing. So I'm aligning this edge, this is the, the edge of the roll, so it's not a cut edge, it's the existing edge of the roll. I'm aligning it so it's just a couple of millimetres down below the edge of the frame. Um, now that's quite important, we'll come to that later on. So I put the two staples in nice and secure in one corner and I'm going to go to the other end and pull it off tight 
and um, uh, repeat the process. Now I've got the other end stretched out, so what I'm going to do now is center up and um, put a staple in, and then I'm going to center again and staple and center and center and center. So I do not run staples down from one end to the other. That's a sure recipe for getting a bunch in at one end. So center, center again, and then center and center and center. Until eventually you've got staples um, through the gaffer tape at about 100 mil intervals. And that will pretty much hold the, um, the thing in place. But now what we do is get a roll of gaffer tape and we run a strip right the way down. And then we staple continuously down the gaffer tape. So I would suggest, I think in some of the instructions it says staple every four inches. Well, I would suggest that's just not enough. And um, you basically need an almost continuous run of staples. This mirror needs to be fixed onto the frame. Now you'll notice that I left that gaffer tape hanging down. Do not trim the gaffer tape at this stage. Because you will find, if you've made a bit of an error when you're stretching and you you start to heat the, the mirror and you've still got some kind of quite slack mirror, you will find you can go around and just prise out those staples and with a, a pair of um, ideally canvas stretching pliers, they, they're not much cop for stretching canvas flats, but they're pretty good on these, um, you can just tug it back and re-staple it and it will make it much, much quicker to um, to finally shrink out the, um, the final uh, ripples. <coughs> So I've got the one edge fully stretched and fixed on. So now I'm going into a, another corner. Video's in a rather strange place, but um, I'm going into a, a bottom corner. I'm trying to line up the material. Now it's not easy to line up because unlike canvas, which has got a waft and a weft, um, if that's the right terminology, there's no kind of grain on this. So you can't kind of line it up with the grain. So you have to kind of guess what's a right angle. That can be a bit tricky. So for that reason, don't, um, you know, fix the whole thing on with loads of staples and loads of tabs. Get it lined up. Satisfy yourself that it all looks, you know, pretty good and pretty even. And then once you're really happy that that's, um, you know, pretty square and pretty correct, then just repeat the process. So you're then going half, 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 centering up all the time and with those tabs every four inches. And then, um, and then repeat. Now, <clears throat> this was my first one I've done for quite a long time. And I can remember in the past, I've, I can almost stretch with care. I can almost stretch this mirror so it looks pretty good without heat. Yeah, you can see there's a fair few wrinkles. There. There's a little bit of kind of rucking up as well. So, um, mm, well, it could do better kind of thing. But um, so finally, there's tape all the way around got those wrinkles and now we're going to um, apply some heat to it to um, to see how we get on. Now heat wise um, I know uh, th th there is a possibility I believe of putting it inside a vacuum form oven but I, I haven't got such a thing and I'm not experienced with it so um, that could be an absolutely brilliant way of shrinking these things but um, I, I can't I can't advise on that. But what we always used to use in the scenery company when we were doing them was one of these, um, I think what the insurance companies refer to as portable bombs. It's basically a propane jet heater. Got a nice big nozzle, so it puts out a great big round circle of heat. And um, we used to just get the flats, stand them up, and then gently walk past um, quite close. You'll be surprised how close you need to get. And it, it, it's hot. If you stood there, your trousers would catch on fire. Um, so we're talking about 250 mil or less away from the end of this um, jet heater. And then we just go back and forwards um, time and time again, just applying heat, lowering the flat until the whole area has been covered. And then um, when we get about halfway through, we take it away, we circus the flat, spin it and um, start again. So you can see there's kind of some tension coming into the mirror now. In places it's going looking okay, in other places there's still a few few ripples. 
I can remember doing these and um, at this stage, just using the jet heater on it, if you've done the stretching really well on the odd flat, you could just, that would be it. it you'd get a full result just from using this jet heater. But in most cases, 80% of cases, there would always be some extra shrinking that you need to do using a heat gun. So here we go. We've had the, um, the main heat applied with the big space heater and um, I've got it back on the bench. And you can see there's a bit of rucking up in the corner and there's some rippling there in the middle. Now, here's a little tip. If you've got a big bit of rippling in the middle, rather than spending ages with a heat gun trying to shrink it out, what you can do at this stage is just gently, with a screwdriver, remove those staples along the edge and remember how you've still got some gaffer tape hanging down. If you get a pair of canvas pliers, you can just tug that mirror by hand and you can pull those wrinkles out very, very quickly just by um, pulling the stuff over and then restapling. So this is the kind of thing that really, if you've got this forming in the middle, then um, you're best off just pulling out the staples and just giving it an extra little shrink. Whatever you do though, don't, don't hang around with that, um, that heat gun because if you stop moving or get too close, you will scorch the material. And um, that's a real shame if you've got a flat almost there and it's got a, a little scorch mark in it. And at the end there, that's a mirror reflection of the ceiling. And you can see it's beginning to form a pretty good, pretty good reflection. And the corners, you see there's always a little bit of creasing up in the corners. You can get rid of those, not 100% always. If you're designing a set with mirrors in, always best if you can to have a cover fillet rather than having them all butting up against each other. But I'm not saying it's impossible to get a perfect result, but it's quite, it's quite tricky. So if in the corner you've got some rucking up that you just can't get rid of, again, just get the staples and just prise them out. You would always, always do a whole one whole flat first. Satisfy yourself you've got the technique correct before you proceed um, and cover a whole batch of flats and then realise that you haven't stretched them properly in the first place. If you can get a really good stretch in the first place, it will completely pay off. This is the final result. Um, I would say for my first one, after 15 years, there are tiny little bits in the corner. To be honest, I, I could probably get rid of those, but um, I, I'm just slightly limited on the time I can spend on it. But it's a, it's a pretty good um, reflection. Um, took a bit longer than I wanted, but um, my next one would be a lot, lot quicker. And hopefully with the little tips you've picked up off this video, you'll be able to go straight into doing one kind of quite swiftly with, um, with first class results. But um, yeah, good luck with the project. And uh, as I say, do a sample first, make sure you're happy with it, and then um, plow on with the rest.